All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Proving Grounds. Uh, I'd like to start out by thanking our sponsors in the stellar, stellar level, Verisprite, Fertivity, Tenable, Amazon, and Source of Knowledge. Uh, they're all out in the chill out area, so please thank them. So this track is being recorded and streamed, so at the end when we do Q&A, we're gonna be running mics, and there's also a mic up here in the front. Um, so our next talk is on Hacking the High Seas, Cruise Line Security Assessment by Chad Dewey. Let's please welcome Chad. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming, I appreciate it. Thank you, B-Sides, for having me. Uh, thank you, Adam Brand, for being my mentor and actually making this presentation what it is today. Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to be discussing Hacking the High Seas. It originally started out with just cruise lines, uh, but ended up going a little bit further, uh, as you'll see here in a minute. All right, so who am I? My name is Chad Dewey. I'm a computer science and information systems instructor at Saginaw Valley State University, small university in uh, Michigan. I have degrees in stuff. Uh, I do pen testing from time to time, and uh, I'm curious about weird stuff like cruise ships. All right, so this is not the intention of this talk. I'm, you know, obviously I don't want this to happen. Uh, cruising, uh, just, just a little bit of background. My, my favorite way of uh, vacationing is on cruise ships. I've taken several cruises, and we'll go over that here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, this was human error, by the way. All right, so disclaimer, this is the cover your ass part, okay? Um, no unauthorized access to cruise ships or cruise ship systems were obtained or even a Tempted, okay? <laughs> All righty then. Uh, uh, most of these observations are in-person observations, especially when I was on the cruise ship, uh, cruise ships. Uh, and uh, review of publicly available resources, they're out there. Any, okay, so everything I've done here today, any of you can do, okay? Uh, using Shodan, uh, Shodan, Shodan, Potato, Potato, Aaron Who Is, uh, and the manuals of some of these systems, okay? Um, I'm not releasing any of the names of the cruise ships uh, or cruise lines at this time. Um, I've done my due diligence to try and uh, share this information with them, and uh, only a couple have responded so far. Uh, right now, some of them are pretty, probably thinking, oh shit, or something. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, I've obviously done a lot of cruising over the years, uh, starting in May 2005, and uh, had a little bit of a hiatus, and then 2011, I ramped it back up again. So. All right, so overview of the presentation. Uh, before the cruise, hooking yourself up with goodies and uh, little perks here and there. Uh, during the cruise, kind of taking a little look at their Wi-Fi and the physical security of the ship. And then after the cruise, where probably the more interesting stuff is, internet connectivity, system vulnerabilities, forward-facing services, that sort of thing. Okay. All right, so starting out, hooking yourself up. Now, before you start a cruise, you usually have to sign up on a cruise, uh, for a cruise, and this is usually done online. You make reservations, you give them your credit card and a lot of money, and everything's supposed to be good to go. Um, some of these cruise lines do not have um, good sanitization of the, uh, the information that's given to them. For example, this is my uh, profile on one of the, one of the cruise ships here. Um, and. Uh, this is the things you can do within your account, okay? For example, update missing information, such as ship or dates uh, that you traveled in the past, in case they might have missed something, okay? Now, uh, again, this is my real profile. I blacked out some of the stuff, and you know, if you've cruised before, then you, know, you might be able to guess who this is, but anyway. Um, so this, according to this, it shows that I've cruised uh, on seven different cruises, each of them a seven-day cruise. Um, it looks like I've done seven cruises. Not really. Um, I've only actually cruised four times with this, uh, this particular cruise line, and those are the four real ones, okay? Um, I never cruised, well, I did cruise in 2011, okay? Um, but only one time, okay? Um, now, the purpose of showing you this is uh, um, you get perks. Okay, each cruise line has its own little tier system. You start out with blue, maybe go to gold, platinum, so on and so forth. With these perks, you get, uh, I don't know, free Wi-Fi, you know, so you get internet connection on the ship. Um, sometimes they give you other perks, like have a drink with a captain, that sort of thing. Some of them even give you tours of the ship. Okay. So, um, as far as uh, starting up and uh, 
uh, uh, signing up for your cruises here, again, uh, there's a double there, okay? So I wanted to go a little bit further. Well, let's see, I never cruised in 2009. So I can see this, okay, maybe they're, they're doubling it up because I actually did cruise then. Well, they didn't check to see if I, cru checked or, uh, if I cruised in 2009, I did not, okay? I did cruise in 2005 on this particular ship, the Caribbean ship, but I did not cruise on the Crown ship. Why? Well, because it was still being built, <laughs> okay? It didn't have its maiden voyage until June of 2006. Okay, so again, they didn't check anything. Um, not a whole lot of harm is done here. Um, you know, I just get my cruise status elevated a little bit. Okay, other uh, perks on some of these cruise ships. Beforehand, before the, uh, the cruise, you can tell them uh, you've had an anniversary, a birthday, you've graduated, uh, you got married, whatever the case may be, and you give, you're given certain perks uh, for these things. A couple of these perks, well, I got all three of these because it was my anniversary again. Um, and uh, I got a $25 gift card for wine, very overpriced wine, but hey, it's a free bottle, right? And uh, I got a photo, and it was very nice of them. And they, and they do this sort of stuff um, just as a perk for you know thanking you for cruising with us, so on and so forth. Um, I've had anniversaries in uh, December, February, March, and May. <laughs> All right, where's my bottle of wine? All right, so now we're on the cruise. So this is during the cruise. So you definitely wanna be careful. All right, wireless security, okay? Um, this is, this is uh, slowly gotten better over time. The first cruise I went on in 2005 uh, was protected with WEP encryption, okay? It's 2005, it, things could've been better, whatever, anyway. Uh, so internet access on these cruise ships can be very expensive. Okay, $25 a day on the last cruise that I went on. Okay, that, that's, that's ridiculous. And the internet is not all that fast either, it's satellite internet. Okay, uh, so anyway, moving right along here. So Wi-Fi is expensive. If you start looking around and poking and prodding at the Wi-Fi, you'll notice that uh, if you're in the room, there's not a whole lot of traffic down there, you're in the belly of the beast. So you, you know, if you're gonna start looking around, you're gonna wanna look at, uh, I don't know, a more, uh, active place like by the pool, okay? And I really didn't have a whole lot of luck. I, I was on vacation, okay? I'm not really gonna sit there and, you know, uh, do all sorts of stuff just trying to get free Wi-Fi because there's other ways of doing that, which I'll get to here in a second. Okay, now remember that platinum status uh, earned you some free Wi-Fi, okay? Uh, fortunately, you don't necessarily have to be platinum in order to gain free Wi-Fi. How? Well, some of these cruise ships uh, give away some personal information by posting your information outside of your cabin. So you have a cabin number, first name, last name, and, one, and all the cruise ships are nice enough to say, oh, you're a gold member, you're a platinum member. All that's required, and you get 150 free minutes on one particular cruise line. In order to get those 150 free minutes, what do you have to know? First name, last name, cabin number. And you have to know that they're, you know, you're platinum, of course. So you could technically pilfer somebody else's free Wi-Fi minutes. Okay. All right, um, and encryption has gotten better, so on and so forth. Okay, so other physical security issues, safe, they all of them have safes in the room. Some are numerical, some of them use a magnetic strip card. Uh, the magnetic strip card was an odd one because they said you should either use a credit card or your driver's license. No, you don't need to do that. I used, I think I used a gift card to Longhorns or something like that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so staff doors are almost never locked. Some had no locks. Uh, and as you'll see in the next slide, some even worse. Uh, doors to ship internals were almost never locked. Uh, many had, again, had no locks. So you could technically waltz right in there if you wanted to. Staff laundry, so I've been told. Staff laundry uh, could be found along with forgotten name tags on them. So you could technically act as if you were, uh, you know, one of them. Okay, there's, uh, you know, anywhere from a thousand to two thousand crew members, so they don't know everybody. So you could get away with something like that. Um, I found a total of six passenger ba badges sitting by the pool. With those, they're associated with a credit card. That's where it gets a little bit scary because you could take it, charge up a bunch of drinks, and put it right back. And 
uh, yeah, they might not know until the very last day of the cruise when they get billed. So there's, you know, that's not necessarily the cruise line's fault, by the way. That's, that's just people being people. Uh, picture verification of passenger when a card is swiped. The employees are supposed to take a look uh, when they swipe their card for a drink. It shows a picture of the person, okay? Uh, the problem is they, they don't look at it. You know, they just, they're just, they're just busy churning out the drinks, okay? So there is a safeguard in place. It's just not very well utilized by the employees, okay? All right, so again, uh, a lot of crew areas are, don't necessarily have locks and some are not very well guarded. It's a little bit of a closer view on that. It kind of looks like freezer curtains. So, you know, that's gonna keep a lot of people out. <laughs> All right. So, uh, here we are, engine control room, okay? I have never been in an engine control room. I have never been in uh, uh, the bridge. Some cruise ships allow this, depending on your member status, uh, on certain cruise lines, not all of them, okay? So I found this on the internet, okay? So this is the engine control room, obviously heavily computerized. This is the bridge, okay? Um, again, I just found this on the internet. If you look a little closer, you can see the, uh, well, you can't really see it here, but the navigation system is a Sperry Marine Vision Master, Master FT. The issue with this is it runs Windows XP. <laughs> they all do, okay? And they're still all utilized. Uh, and the ships, there's just not really any upgrades going on there. Okay, so you can see a problem there. So after the cruise, oops, went too far, sorry. All right, so the inter yeah, internet ships. So public IP addresses. Each ship has an IP address range uh, associated with it. We'll get into that in a second. They're all on something called the Maritime Telecommunications Network. Okay, the MTN uh, basically handles, uh, uh, well, I'll get to it here in a second. I'll actually go into more detail. Uh, and there's several internet-facing vulnerabilities, and we'll discuss those here in a second. Um, again, all I had to do is use an Aaron Who Is and uh, Shodan to do all this, so like I say, any of you could do it. Okay, looking at things from the outside, the Maritime Telecommunications Network uses this IP address range. So all of the ships, or I can't say all, most of the ships, whether it be cruise lines or military vessels, so on and so forth, uh, are normally connected to the Maritime Telecommunications Network, okay? So the internet of ships. Okay, this just explains what the MTN is and what it does. Um, see if I forget anything. Luxury yachts, oil rigs, government and military vessels, and cruise lines all use the MTN for internet service providers when out at sea. Okay, so again, all these ships have IP address ranges that are actually specific to each of these ships. Tahitian Princess, Diamond Princess, Island Princess, Emerald Princess, so on and so forth. Okay. <laughs> and there, believe me, there's many, many more. I just kind of let it slide. I'm going to skip right past it. Here. Okay. Uh, this one is my trust fund. Uh, again, luxury yachts. Those are the jokes, people. That's, that's, that's all I got. <laughs> This one you might want to be a little bit careful of. You can probably guess what's in this range. Hopefully. Right. There's also another one called, like, uh, was it uh, uh, Carnival HQ? Wonder what that is. Okay. That speaks for itself. All right. So, anyway, uh, a few statistics here using some uh, old encryption methods here. Um, Obviously, they have uh, vulnerabilities associated with them. Some of the services running on these, these are, again, these are forward-facing services. Some issues there. PC anywhere. Uh, Windows, rem <laughs> Windows Remote Management. <coughs> and the most clever thing I think I've seen, Telnet on port 2323. They, they were the first to figure that one out. All right, so this is where it gets a little creepy. That top one, though, okay? Debian 4 uh, lost support back in, what, 2010? I don't remember what month, but obviously it's a little old. Um, some, like, a, <laughs> you can read them. 
Uh, voice over IP systems on a ship with remote access using the default username and password. Um, several ships containing old Linux kernels. A Microsoft Exchange server, 2003. Okay. Um, this just goes into CVEs and stuff like that. Several ships running drop bear. So another, again, a lot of issues. These aren't even all of them. These are just some of the ones that kind of were the creepiest to me. All right, and much, much more. Um, enough vulnerabilities to create. <laughs> huh? <laughs> All righty then. All right, so some cruise lines don't bother to fix some of these issues. For example, the free stuff, right? A bottle of wine, a massage, a, you know, whatever the case may be. They'll give it away because you're spending, you know, anywhere from $500 on up per person to go on a cruise. Okay, um, so I actually contacted that particular cruise line, and they're like, "Eh, we're, we're okay with that." Well, I'm okay with that too, but you know. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, uh, some of the other issues I haven't heard replies on. You know, they maybe they're thinking, "Oh shit," and. They're kind of doing what they got to do. Now, I understand that some of these things take time. Imagine these navigation systems trying to upgrade those. Windows XP, uh, they're going to have to take the ship out of service for at least a little while. Uh, so, you know, just to try and upgrade that and so on and so forth. Uh, over the last 10 years, though, each cruise line has steadily increased their wireless security with better encryption. We hope so. Uh, their internet kiosks have gone from PCs with Windows XP. Now, this is 2005, so, you know, uh, but now they're using Windows Vista. <laughs> using Chrome and incognito mode with deep freeze. So at least they're trying, okay? Um, anyway, uh, okay, uh, that's all I got. I'd like to thank Adam Brand again uh, for being the B -side, my B-Sides uh, Las Vegas mentor. He's been a huge help. I still would have been working on this if it wasn't for him, so he helped me find some efficiencies here. Uh, Dr. Lonnie Decker and Dr. Scott James for uh, guiding me through this whole process, not necessarily with his presentation, but I guess in life. Uh, Chris Roberts, obviously, you know, I kind of uh, followed his lead on some of this stuff. Uh, Christina Lane, my mother, for their inspiration and support through this entire thing. All right, if you have questions, uh, I have an email address here for you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, feel free to contact me. Um, I'll send you the slides, uh, but that's about it. I'm not going to send you a bunch of stuff that I found. So you, can, you guys can look that up for yourself. Any questions? Yes, hi. Thank you for the talk. Um, yeah. Could you go into a little more detail about how you uh, got the free, you know, the privileges and the, <laughs> the anniversary <laughs> celebrations? Like, uh, like I guess the bottles just a of breakdown. wine? Yeah. How, like how the bottles of wine? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, uh, when you sign up for, a sh for every cruise I've been on, um, as you're signing up for the cruise, they ask you, check the box. Have you, are you expecting an anniversary? Oh, uh, is there a special you? event? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, the, right, just, to, well, you know, <laughs> one of them. But if you do pick one, pick anniversary, that's usually the most lucrative. <laughs> yes. I, don't, I don't suppose you've looked into the uh, jurisdictional issues uh, of hacking a cruise ship, for instance. Like if you're in international waters uh, on a Barbados flagship, who comes after you if you do something you shouldn't do? Well, first off, you shouldn't do anything bad. No, like no, that. no, no. Obviously, no. Never, <laughs> never hack anything ever. But right, if right, you right. do hack something, okay. who arrests you? Yeah, that's a good question. I think if you should accidentally okay, all right. hack, theoretically, maybe. okay. Um, I would assume there's some sort of maritime law regarding that. As far as who comes and busts you, I guess the next port of call, or maybe at the very end, if you left out of Miami or Fort Lauderdale, somebody might be waiting for you, uh, or they know who you are, where you live, and <laughs> they already know. That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is there okay? I'm not very familiar with maritime law, so I'm actually going to have to look some of this stuff up. Well, I mean, I guess I don't really have to. I've done nothing wrong. <laughs> but it's good to know. Knowledge is power and all that. But 
<laughs> yes, question. Hey, how's it going? Um, I was just wondering if you, when you were talking to these uh, cruise line operators, if you ever bring up the subject of like denial of service, especially with their wireless links, like what if somebody were to plant a box on a cruise ship or any ship that basically disrupts all GPS signals or VSAT, what if somebody finds one open on Shodan and like turns it off? I wonder what sort of, you know. That, that's I something I hope I never see, especially <laughs> while I'm on the ship. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I just, I don't know if that subject's ever come up when you like talk to them or. Well, I would assume they have uh, several backup systems. Again, they're on, they, it's part of a satellite network, so maybe there's other things they could do. I mean, I'm sure there's some kind of backups, I would hope, uh, but do I know that for sure? No. Uh, the satellite navigation systems, if you've ever been on a cruise ship, they have these big globes outside. Okay, well, that's it. And you can usually touch them over the rail, so that's kind of creepy. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, obviously container ships won't offer you the same perks if it's your anniversary and you're shipping cargo, uh -huh. but how much of what was on the cruise ships, such as navigation and, and security of uh, physical facilities, how much that would carry over into the container ship fleet? Pretty much the same thing except for the free stuff. Um, speaking of which, um, I actually submitted this presentation February 7th of 2016. I didn't find out until May. Um, I was doing some Google searching and found that uh, some Somali pirates actually compromised uh, a container ship manifesto to make themselves more uh, efficient at being pirates. So they knew where all the good stuff was because they got a, a manifesto of everything that was on the ship. So. So what about the navigational data coming back you know, on the, on the public side of the ship? It'll tell you basically where it is mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah, there's, well there's actually maps, uh, online maps to show you where every ship is pretty much all over the world in, in international waters. Is there anybody else? Any more questions? All right, thanks, John. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Appreciate it.